Thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Sean Wallace. I'm a PhD candidate at Brown University, advised by Jeff Wong. I want to thank my co-authors for their continued support on this work over the past six years, running various studies and developing the systems that are used within our two case studies we're presenting today. Our work focuses on extending the maturity phase of evolving data. Not all data is static. To maintain its accuracy as it grows in size and data evolves, it is necessary for groups of people to collectively review and edit the data. We use a tabular data set of computer science academic profiles that we have previously collected in our case studies. The data changes over time due to job changes and contains different levels of complexity and subjectivity. For example, interpreting someone's subfield area of expertise requires domain-specific knowledge. It could be difficult to understand exactly if somebody's research area is machine learning or artificial intelligence. We find that it is imperative to verify and maintain tabular datasets accuracy to enable its continuous positive impacts. We conduct two separate case studies to examine how paid crowd workers and unpaid contributors improve a crowd collected tabular datasets accuracy. The first case study focuses on verification strategies and relies on requesters posting microtasks to recruit paid crowd workers to edit tabular data quickly. The second case study examines maintenance strategies that rely on waiting for unpaid contributors to continuously visit and make unsolicited and solicited edits to tabular data. Our five verification strategies are adopted from literature. For example, majority rule and expert rule collect duplicate rows of data. In fine fix verify, an expert rule recruit a trusted crowd worker to perform a final verification step. To compute each strategy's accuracy, we first use stratified sampling to select edits to label as correct or incorrect. We compared each edit's value when it was made with faculty web pages, LinkedIn profiles, and resumes. You can see that the most accurate strategies recruit a trusted crowd worker to verify data or break ties. However, if your goal is to verify data using a less costly method, collecting duplicates provides a familiar task for paid crowd workers. You can see how majority rule and expert rule are the two cheapest verification strategies. Balancing cost and accuracy, expert rule perform best. While fine fix verify is accurate, it is expensive because requesters have to recruit multiple crowd workers for each cell. Subfield or professor's research area was our most subjective data type. It has the lowest accuracy per data type. This could be because identifying a professor's subfield requires domain specific knowledge can be difficult for crowd workers to interpret correctly. For example, we often saw that paid crowd workers believed that a professor's area of expertise was actually computer education, where it could be databases or HCI. Expert rule has the highest overall accuracy and performs consistently well across all columns. You can see the difference hiring the trusted crowd worker makes when comparing expert and majority rule. If you had to pick one verification strategy, we would recommend expert rule can be easy and familiar for most people to run uh, crowdsourcing tasks, and Expert Rule applied the best uh, benefits of collecting multiple rows while also recruiting additional crowd workers uh, to break those ties or to you know, try to solve difficult to understand data. One challenge there is actually going through processes to try and find and recruit the trusted crowd worker. And we found from our anecdotal evidence that we saw that the initial duplication efforts of getting multiple rows was an easy way to actually find crowd workers who produced good work or had good communication skills. Moving on, our two maintenance strategies were conducted on Drafty, a custom web application we have developed over the past six years. Within Drafty, unpaid contributors can freely edit data, or Drafty can ask them to fix data matching their interests. This is an example of the current version of Drafty containing many of the columns that we studied within our case studies. It's a simple spreadsheet where Users can sort rows or search, and they can double-click to edit, similar to Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Now, when Drafty asks the user to fix a specific cell, or this is the uh, solicitation strategy, um, it does this by tracking their implicit interactions and then drives their interest per row using the user interest profile from our previous work, which tracks users' clicks and edits and sorts and searches and computes those values to derive an interest per row. This is an example of Drafty soliciting an unpaid contributor to review data and to either close the window and not provide information, or they could actually provide a suggested value for that professor. Excluding the initial months when we made social media posts advertising the data set, the months with the highest edits were November and December. 
the months with the lowest number of edits were June and August. November and December align with the graduate school and job application periods, while the summer months are not overly active except for faculty members officially starting new positions. This shows that users' uh, inherent interests in the data set kind of influenced them visiting it, and then while they were there, they would actually improve the data and make edits. Asking users to fix data matching their interests provided highly accurate edits. However, they rejected the request over 90% of the time, showing that this was actually a negative interruption. They didn't really want it to happen. So, unsolicited edits being more frequent, they were also highly accurate without interrupting the user. We found over time for these to be more than satisfactory for maintaining the data set. Previous work shows that users with expertise in specialized tasks or interests in the data perform better. Unpaid contributors may have an interest in or prior knowledge of the data, leading to higher accuracy when editing challenging information. So for example, they have the inherent knowledge to tell the difference between uh, machine learning or AI as a subfield area of expertise for a specific professor. Now columns with less subjective data, such as bachelor's or master's degrees, have lower accuracy. These data types are more difficult to find upon review. Professors do not only list their degree on their websites or other sources whereas their PhD is usually prominently displayed on CVs or their web pages. That's relatively easy to find. We do not observe unpaid contributors deleting data or entering values that would be considered inappropriate or incorrect. Errors most likely resulted from incorrect interpretations of data. These results show that the maintenance strategies do not have to rely on power users, users making the bulk of edits, to maintain an accurate tabular data set. This result runs contrary to results from Wikipedia and Wikidata, where power users primarily maintain its articles. Unpaid contributors visit the dataset because of their interest in it, and are accurate across many data types, whether they require domain-specific knowledge or they do not. Our longitudinal study shows unpaid visitors can extend the maturity phase in evolving datasets by making unpaid contributions in the form of edits. Our paper has additional results in a lengthy discussion section discussing how our results can influence future research. Most interestingly, we compare uh, paid versus unpaid strategies, and we have uh, proposed future work around automated ways to continuously attract unpaid contributors to a system like Drafty to maintain the data set over long periods of time. We also have additional results about adding new rows of data or filling in missing cells. So for example, uh, the unpaid contributors often were not highly accurate or active adding missing rows of data, and we believe that is because it's an action that requires a lot more work, and that's where extrinsic motivators can come in and kind of push somebody to provide more data. We also always ask, can we provide a reward to a user for editing data? How can we motivate users? This is one question we always try to adhere to. And after the end of this study, which we developed a new system uh, for Drafty, we also developed another resource to try and attract users and motivate them to edit it which is CS Open Rankings. It's a meta ranker that allows users to develop their own rankings using different sources per research area and subfield. The placement rank metric is based on the placement of students from an institution into faculty positions. It uses Drafty's data and is refreshed daily as users maintain the CS professor's data set. Also, if you click on a drop down per university, you can see the current faculty and list of alumni and what schools they went and taught at. You can also change the rankings based upon area or subfield. To see CS Open Rankings, our data set of computer science professors, please visit drafty.cs.brown.edu. Thank you.